Good morning. You know, science is amazing. Technology is amazing. Life on Earth here is amazing. Have you guys heard of the water bear? If you haven't, you need to go onto YouTube, not right now, it's some other speaker's talk, <laughs> and you need to check out the water bear. These creatures, they're amazing. They're about half a millimeter long. They're tiny, they're tiny, they're all over the planet. But what's amazing about them is that they can survive temperatures as low as nearly absolute zero. They can bake in an oven and still survive. They can survive pressures as deep as the ocean depths, six times the ocean depths, in fact. And radiation, water bear don't care. Water bears can survive lethal radiation a hundred times past what humans can survive. They are really amazing creatures, but that's not all. If you put these guys out in outer space and then collect them, they're still alive. They can survive the vacuum of outer space. That's amazing. Life is amazing. But humans, humans, we're interesting creatures. We're soft, we're fleshy. We're not well protected. We can't survive radiation very well or depths or temperatures. But we're interesting because we can sit here in this audience, in an audience of 200, 250 people, transmitting this talk across the globe, around the globe, to people watching computers, people on cell phones. It's amazing. It's amazing the things we can do. But we can't fight saber-toothed tigers. We're not, we're not water bears. But there's something interesting about us. There's something that makes us unique. <clears throat> now, humans dominate this planet. There's about seven billion of us. And there's only about 100,000 of the most populous apes out there. So again, something about us is unique. And what that is, is right up here. It's our frontal lobe. We have a slightly enlarged frontal lobe compared to other apes, compared to other organisms. The frontal lobe is a region of the brain that allows for creativity, that allows for abstract thought, for social behavior, for decision making. So, we have this frontal lobe. That allows us to do things like make snares, make fishnets, to form complex, multifaceted trade networks. That allows us to form democracies. We can cure diseases, and we can use that frontal lobe to develop the technologies that allow us to go into outer space, to eventually colonize our solar system and beyond. Humans are amazing. We're the most intelligent creatures that have ever lived on this planet. And we live in an amazing time. We live in the middle of a technological and scientific renaissance. It's the minds of incredibly creative people, intelligent people, brilliant people, who are out there creating, innovating. These are the people that make the impossible possible, that turn science fiction into science fact. So a lot of people look at these individuals, these individuals that we might call geniuses, and we look at them from afar, and we think that this is something that, uh, that we can aspire to, but maybe we can't get to. It's something that we, we admire. Really, I want to say that a lot of people think that people like Einstein, they come once in a century. Maybe they're rare. Maybe if we're lucky, we get an Einstein. But I'm going to stand here today telling you that Einsteins are everywhere. Einsteins are in every town. They're in every city, they're across the nation, and they're around the globe. Now, they may not have been given the tools necessary to be Einsteins, but they're everywhere. Not just in physics, but in art, in music, in science, in mathematics, in engineering, in mechanics. Now, speaking of mechanics, I knew this boy, his name was Stacy, uh, when I was in high school. Uh, Stacy was not a great student, at least by standardized testing examples. Uh, Stacy made poor grades, Stacy uh, was in a special education program because of his poor grades. Uh, he couldn't sit still in class. He had trouble focusing. He was the type of student that today we would probably put on ADHD medicine. Now, Stacy was in trouble a lot because he didn't have a lot of confidence in himself. Uh, he was in the principal's office for misbehavior quite a lot. Now, my dad, he was an ag mechanics teacher at the school I went to, that Stacy went to. My dad was an interesting guy, because I don't think he was one of those teachers that really liked to teach in a classroom. If you gave him chalk and a chalkboard, not his thing, not his thing at all. 
he really liked to take the students out into the shop and show them with his hands how to do things, how to do things firsthand. I was in the same class, I was in that class, and I was out you know, jigsawing wood without my safety goggles and electrocuting myself as I welded for the fifth time. I was, uh, it's not me, I'm glad I'm a scientist. Not my thing. But Stacy, Stacy excelled. Stacy could do anything in that class. He built a horse trailer. He, um, when, when people in the community had broken lawnmowers, broken tillers, they would bring him in. Stacy could fix those things. He could weld anything, and welding is an amazing art. So for one hour a day, one hour out of Stacy's day, he actually was calm, he was relaxed. Stacy didn't misbehave. Stacy found a purpose. Stacy really found what he was good at. And if you ask any other teacher at that high school what they thought about Stacy, they would probably say that Stacy was one of the worst students they had ever had. But if you ask my dad, if you ask my dad about Stacy, my dad would probably say that Stacy was one of the best students he ever had. You know, kids are uniquely intelligent. They have a lot of creativity just within them. I think we lose a lot of that creativity as we get older, but kids are imaginative. If you can take a kid away from an iPad long enough and kick them outside, then uh, they're going to go outside, they're going to turn over rocks, they're going to look to see what bugs are underneath those rocks, they're going to find uh, worms, they're going to have a lot of fun. I mean, come on, what kid do you know doesn't know the entire extended Star Wars universe? and every single character of the Marvel or DC superhero universe. They, they have this amazing ability to memorize things, sometimes useless information, but mass amounts of it. <laughs> you know, my wife and I actually joke that if we, could take, if we could take our son's mental capacity for memorizing Star Wars and superheroes and channel it into curing cancer, the American Cancer Society would shut its doors in about a year. That'd be a good thing. Uh, not for the American Cancer Society, <laughs> for people with cancer. <laughs> education is interesting. Uh, edu education, they like to take certain types of intelligences and, and put it up on a pedestal. Reading, writing, and math. You know, and those are good. Those are, those are important skills, but there's, people have a lot more different types of intelligence. There's many, many more types of intelligence out there that maybe standardized tests don't capture. There's interpersonal intelligence, there's spatial intelligence, there's mechanical intelligence, there's music, there's art. These are all types of intelligence. Some people can do all of them, some people can do some of them really, really well. Now, come on, we know that schools sort of prioritize some of these types of intelligence because when funding is low, what are the first programs that get cut? Music and art, you guys are nodding, you know. Music and art. But there are people that are brilliant in music and art and they're not getting nurtured. Their creativity is not getting nurtured. They may not be good at math and science, but they could be great at art. Now, Stacy, he wasn't good at math. He couldn't write an essay for anything, but he could build anything. He could build anything. And so I think, you know, perhaps the school system as we are, as non-diverse as it is, really we're letting some people sort of sink that could be great creators, that, that could really be good at what they do but are left sort of in the dirt feeling that they're not smart, that they're not talented, and that they really don't have a future in this world. But I'm saying they do. They just have to find it. You know, so I may need a physicist or an engineer with a perfect GPA, brilliant in math, to calculate the escape velocity of a rocket leaving the Earth's orbit, but I need a Stacy to build that rocket. I need a Steve Jobs, who also wasn't very good in school, I need a Steve Jobs to market that program. I need a Neil Armstrong to fly that rocket. And as that rocket has taken off into space and people are cheering and yelling, I need Jimi Hendrix on the guitar <laughs> playing the national anthem. You gotta have my theme music. These people are all brilliant. They're all brilliant. But they're brilliant in different ways. Brilliance, intelligence, genius is not vanilla. It comes in a rainbow of colors. It comes in a rainbow of flavors. All right, it's the people who are creative, who are divergent, who have these unique qualities. These are really the people that change history. The Albert Einsteins, the Wright brothers. You know, Albert Einstein, he was, by all measures, not the greatest student during school. He dropped out of school when he was 15. Yet he changed our perception of physics.
The Wright brothers, it's been said that they may have been autistic, yet they laid the seed for global travel. So intelligence, intelligence is not vanilla. There's a rainbow of flavors out there for this. So I'm a scientist, and I'm an educator, and I train the next generation of creative thinkers, of innovators, but I also hire the next generation of creative thinkers and educators. And I'm looking for people who can think outside the box. I like people who can do math. I like people who can do science. Speaking, reading, writing, it's important, but maybe not for every job. There's some jobs out there that you need to be artistic. You need to be able to see things that no one's seen and put these things together in ways that no one's ever put them together to solve problems that no one has ever solved. So what can we do? I'm not one of these people who's going to sit here and say we have a problem without offering a solution. We need to innovate schools. We need to create environments that nurture experimentation and exploration. Textbooks are great. We have to memorize large amounts of data. That's just life. We have to learn things. But textbooks rarely inspire creativity, and they're not a laboratory. We have to create experiences beyond the bubble of what children are used to. They need to see more than their little textbook, than their little desk, than the little walls of their classroom. I would argue that a field trip done correctly would have more impact on the future life of a student than sitting in a classroom for a week. They need to go beyond their bubble. Next, they need to ask questions. We all know that. We know kids need to ask questions. They grow up asking questions. They ask questions to the point that they drive us insane. And then at some point, they stop, whether it's uncomfortable for them to ask questions or we just kind of ignore them, or they, you know, school just sort of pushes it out of them but they need to ask questions. Questions are the fire that ignite innovation. Every line in those textbooks your kids are reading, it started with a person asking a question. And finally, we need to encourage our kids to take risks. Safe risks, but risks. Risks are important. Pushing our children outside their comfort zone. That enhances their experience, their confidence. And what it ends up giving them, it ends up giving them character. It ends up giving them confidence. It gives them stamina when things go hard. And it gives them grit. Grit's important. You have to have that to make it through life. You have to have some learning from failure to make it through life. I think right now in the time of everybody gets a trophy, it's great. We don't like to hurt our kids' feelings, but they need to fail because they need to be able to learn from failure. I stand before you here today as a parent, as an educator, as a decision maker, and I know many of those are sitting in the audience. Inspire creativity, foster every type of intelligence that you can possibly foster in a child. Let them find themselves, let them open their minds, and let them go with it. Thank you.